Well, good evening to one and all. Just thought I'd make a very quick video. Um, no sexy intro, no thumbs up and all that good stuff. Um, I watched an Adrian Barker video recently. And then tonight I watched, uh, what's his name, David Khalil. Sort of confirm uh, or ride on the back of some of the things Adrian said regarding um, the stories behind watches and why we shouldn't be swayed by them. Now, I'm going to disagree with most of what they said. Now, the thing that riled me the most was uh, the, the recent, the David Khalil one, mainly, oh, I wasn't riled, it's just I disagree. Hey. He had a picture of a Speedmaster on his, on his thumbnail. Now, we all know, unless uh, they're talking about a Rolex, an AP or a Patek, they ain't really interested. Now, on Adrian's case, I can't speak for him, I don't know the guy. But I do think that um, people that are surrounded by watches, be them journalists, um, YouTubers that have got great access, watch dealers, they're not looking at it through the same lens as, as you and I, um, you enthusiasts. I don't get access to loads of watches. I've got what I've got. I see what I see in the shops. I don't have time to you know, graze over a dozen watches. Now, <clears throat> when we think about the watches that we love, I guess there's, there's a couple of things, isn't there? Now, we are naturally drawn to shiny things watches are shiny but why a particular watch is more attractive than others now there's a few reasons why it could be um it could be the old hype machine you know the old instagram social media pushing particular watches on particular people and that's one thing i think at a superficial level that's probably true but i think for you and certainly for me when we think about watches like the speedmaster on this Artem strap, for example. And why did I buy a Speedmaster? Well, it's part of my geek uniform, my armory. It's another accessory that, that um, appeals to me. Yes, it's just a watch. It's not the best watch in the world. Uh, but if David thinks that the watch has been um, superseded many, many, many times, I think, with his, not his exact words, but he's paraphrasing, he's wrong. Uh, up to its replacement uh, very recently, 2020, it remained pretty much unchanged since the, the late 70s. It had a movement change in it. Uh, sorry, the early 70s. So when the step dial and the dot over 90 disappeared back in, what was it, 71, 72? It's pretty much remained the same watch, same case style, same dial, same handset, same markers. That's a long time. Now, that isn't the reason why I love the Speedy so much. It's one of the reasons, that enduring design. And it's similar to, you could argue, the Submariner, where these are proper tool watches. They're icons, and they're icons for a good reason because they were used for a purpose. Now, you could argue if you go and buy the most recent Speedmaster, well, it's not really the real moon watch. Well, that's not the point. You can't buy the old one anymore. I mean, my version, 1861, still flight qualified by NASA for all manned space missions, still. And used uh, until very recently on the arms of Russian cosmonauts. So this actual watch flies in space. Now you could argue that that's so what? But it's not the same as say, um, I don't know, Bremont put in a, I don't know, some pieces of wood from, or a bit of fabric from a, you know, from the, the Wright brothers. It's not, that's not the same because they're piggybacking on someone else's legacy to produce, you know, their own, not the same. Um, take the Cartier Santos, another icon. It's not a boring watch, it was a tall watch. Now, the reason I love this watch isn't because it was worn on the wrist of um, 
that Belgian fellow whose name escapes me. <laughs> uh, put it in the comments. Um, but it's just an enduring design. It's the first men's wristwatch. It's the first pilot's watch. Um, but that aside, it's stylish. And the fact that it's lasted for the best part of 120 years, it must be instrument right. Uh, and people don't go into a car here boot and go, oh, is that the... Um, is that the one that went on? Ah, Santos de Mont. You know, the pilot from 1911. Nobody's asking that. They're buying it because it's a design classic. The fact that it comes with a kick ass uh, backstory is uh, the icing on the cake. Now, most people who buy a Speedmaster will go in there drawn in by the, um, the NASA connection, the Moon connection. And that's absolutely the right thing. Um, for any enthusiast. Now, if you put it on the wrist and you don't like it, don't buy it. Um, but, yeah, just like the people that walk around in, I don't know, flight jackets or other bits of memorabilia, and I've got a yeah, Porsche cap here, or <laughs> I've got a Tudor cap. I like the Tudor cap. Now, I've got a number of caps. I don't wear them because I look an utter burke in them doesn't mean I don't want to own a cap that's got a Tudor logo on it. I've got another one up there. Anyway, so I disagree. I think um, both have taken a very cynical view on life. I think um, we need more joy in life. Uh, stories are great. I love a story. Uh, Rolex Explorer, whether you believe it was the first watch to go up Everest or not, I don't, don't really care. It's it's part of it's part of that law um, that that I that I like. Now, if you took um, what's one of my other favourites, a, a JLC Polaris. Now, I don't like that watch because it has historical significance. I like that watch because it's from a brand like JLC that is completely vertically integrated, and the attention to detail in the dial. You can look at the dial all day. It's a bit of art on your wrist. Um, yeah, all day long. So the story there is the brand, the brand's ethics, the brand's attention to detail, the way they go about their business. Fantastic. They're not just buying bits from China and slapping them in a case. So there's lots of stories to tell out there. Stories of engineers, designers, um, not just about how a watch was worn. So if you just want an expensive bit of jewellery that happens to tell the time, by all means, go and see David. I'm sure he'll find a bit of gold that's got a movement in it and will tell the time as well. Uh, but for me, for you, for most watch enthusiasts, that connection with um, a bygone time where people needed a wristwatch. I was in that time. I mean, I preceded the mobile phone. Not the digital clock, I hasten to add, but... Um, for many years, I relied on a wristwatch to tell the time, and to some degree, still do. Uh, I resist the temptation to whip my phone out to tell the time. I could just do this. Oh, and this story for another time. Anyway, I just wanted to uh, get that off my chest. Uh, I don't know if I don't know if you agree or disagree. Uh, I'm just giving my thoughts. Uh, it's quite late. The hay fever is killing me at the moment. My eyes are itching. I've just, in fact, I've just finished a video uh, that I'm editing. In fact, I had to film it twice because uh, I didn't like it. Bit of a perfectionist, you know that. Uh, on the Speedmaster, I'll put a clear case back on the back. I won't spoil that one. That should come out in a few days. Anyway, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and why not subscribe? Leave all your comments. Uh, I'll be really interested to hear what you've got to say about um, the stories of watches. Why we buy them? It doesn't have to be a reason, I suppose, but I think a connection that harness something, and I think brands know this. We know it. Anyway, take care, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.